Cellular organelles. Organelles literally, literally translated means little organs. The first organelle that we're going to look at is the nucleus. The nucleus contains the DNA of the cell. DNA then controls all activities and or metabolic processes that take place inside of that cell. The nucleus is surrounded by a nuclear membrane. This is a double layer membrane similar to what you see in the plasma membrane. However, it does have some structures called nuclear pores. The nuclear pores are going to allow larger molecules such as RNA to move in or out of that nucleus. The nucleolus is located in the center of the nucleus. It's a dense body of RNA and ribosomes. Ribosomes would then be the next organelle we'll look at. Their function is protein synthesis. Organ or, I'm sorry, the ribosomes can be either free-floating, which means that they are not attached to anything. They would just be floating around inside the cytoplasm. Or they can be bound to an organelle called the endoplasmic reticulum. If you take a look at the picture at the bottom of the screen, you can see the purple nucleus in the blown up picture. Off of that is a network of blue membranes. That's the endoplasmic reticulum. And then all along the endoplasmic reticulum, you can see little red dots. Those little red dots are the ribosomes. The endoplasmic reticulum then, or ER as it's re sometimes referred to, is basically a folded membrane and it is continuous with the nuclear membrane. So the outer layer of that nuclear membrane starts to fold back and forth on itself and creates the endoplasmic reticulum. There are two types of endoplasmic reticulum. The first one is what we call the rough ER. It is named rough ER because it's studded with ribosomes. It does have the ribosomes attached. And so as you can imagine, if you were to run your fingers along the endoplasmic reticulum, you would be able to feel the ribosomes. Again, since it's studded with ribosomes, the function of the rough ER is protein synthesis. The smooth ER, on the other hand, is named as such because it lacks ribosomes, so there are no ribosomes present. Its function is lipid synthesis, so we're making some fats. It also packages products to be sent to another organelle called the Golgi apparatus. If you look at the picture here, again, you've got the purple structure um, of the nucleus, and off of that, we've got the folded back and forth blue membrane. The part of the blue membrane that has the red ribosomes attached is the rough ER. And then as it goes further away from the nucleus, you can see that the membrane becomes more tube-like. That tube-like area is the smooth endoplasmic reticulum. The next organelle is the Golgi apparatus. This is a refining, packaging, and shipping center. It's composed of structures called cisterns, so there's membranous sacs called cisterns, and I kind of think that it looks almost like a stack of pancakes, the cisterns do. What they're going to do is transport materials in vesicles, so from one cistern to another, they're going to take their materials, transport them, or package them into a vesicle, and transport it to the next cistern. A vesicle, of course, just to reiterate, is a membrane-bound sphere. So again, if you take a look at the blown up picture in the bottom here, we've got the Golgi apparatus, and we've got some vesicles, say, coming from the smooth endoplasmic reticulum on the top left of the picture. It's going to go into a cistern where we then maybe package it differently or refine what's coming off of the smooth endoplasmic reticulum there. We repackage them into vesicles and send them elsewhere in the cell. Another organelle is called a lysosome. This is known as the garbage disposal of the cell. Its function is literally to digest cellular material. So lysosomes have enzymes in them that help digest maybe worn out cellular material or other bacteria and such. 
A peroxisome is another of the organelles. This one aids in metabolism and detoxification. So you might imagine that your liver, let's say, would have a bunch of peroxisomes in it. It's also going to help break down hydrogen peroxide. Hydrogen peroxide is fairly toxic inside of the body, and so when your body produces hydrogen peroxide, the peroxisomes will break it down almost immediately so that you don't um, poison yourself. This picture here, you can see the Golgi apparatus is composed of the membranous sacs called cisterns. And coming off of that, we've got a peroxisome. You can see at the top of the picture as well that if you should drink some alcohol, let's say, or have some toxic waste from another cell, the peroxisome is going to help break that down into harmless waste and then exocytose that out of the cell. In the bottom of this picture, you can see that a bacterium is being endocytosed into a vesicle. That vesicle then is going to fuse with a lysosome that's coming off of that Golgi apparatus. It's going to release its digestive enzymes and break down that bacterium and eventually release the harmless waste again to the outside of the cell via exocytosis. Mitochondria are another of the organelles found inside of the cell. This is where ATP production takes place. So you might imagine that cells that require a lot of energy, such as muscle cells, may have lots of mitochondria in them. The structure of a mitochondria is that of a double membrane. Fat and glycogen are the body's energy stores that can be sent to the mitochondria for conversion to ATP. Um, glycogen, remember, is the body's sugar storage. Glycogen is always going to be used prior to fat, so you're going to use up the sugar in your body before you start burning fat. This picture here is showing you the mitochondria. I think they kind of look like kidney beans out of your chili. And you can see that it does have a double membrane where we're going to be creating ATP. Your cell also has a skeleton called the cytoskeleton, so it's not necessarily just a little blob floating around. There's actually structural elements inside of the cell. They're going to reinforce the plasma membrane and support and or move, really, the organelles. One type of cytoskeletal element is called a microfilament. This is used for structural support. The other type of cytoskeletal element that we'll look at is a microtubule. Microtubules are responsible for moving organelles. Cilia are going to be formed from microtubules. Once you see a cilium, you'll know that it's many finger-like projections or hair-like projections sticking up off the top of a cell. Functionally, cilia is there in order to move materials past a cell. For example, in your trachea or your windpipe, you have many cilia. They're there to take the mucus from your respiratory tract and move it back up towards your mouth, hopefully capturing lots of particulate matter and such that you've sucked down into your respiratory passageways. All right, so this picture here is going to show you some of those cytoskeletal elements. You can see that um, there are both microtubules and microfilaments. Microfilaments are forming more of a network, whereas the microtubules are long filamentous structures. Flagella is a, another type of structure that's reinforced via microtubules. Unlike cilia, a flagellum is usually singular, so it's only one long singular projection. And the function of a flagellum is to move an entire cell. The only cells in the human body known to have a flagella would be a sperm cell. They do have what we call a 9 plus 2 arrangement of microtubules inside of the flagellum. That means 9 doublets or pairs of microtubules around the outside plus 2 on the inside. One of the last organelles that we're going to look at is something called a centriole. A centriole is, in fact, created via microtubules as well. They have a 9 plus 0 arrangement of microtubules, so 9 doublets puts no microtubules in the center. And the centriole's function is involved in chromosomal division. So when we need to separate the chromosomes to opposite sides of the cell, these centrioles 
grab on um, and create a spindle apparatus that will separate our chromosomes. And then this is a picture of a flagellum. So we've got a cross section here and you can see the 9 plus 2 arrangement of microtubules.